Welcome to another video. I'm going to go through complex numbers and I'm just going to take them from the graphical approach. How do we visualize complex numbers? They're a strange thing. Now, you have the following tool for visualizing real numbers. Remember, complex numbers are not real numbers. How did I, what did I use to visual, visualize them? I used the line. Here it is. This one just goes from minus 10 to 10. The real number line actually goes all the way to infinity and to minus infinity. So here I can find different numbers like minus seven, there it is. Six, hey, there it is. Hello, six, there. How are you doing? Nine, hello, nine. Zero, there you are. Pi, somewhere around there. Five halves, somewhere around there. Square root of 31, check what that one is. Minus 3.28, wonderful. That seems to be a bit far off, maybe. I don't know. Anyway, those are the real numbers, and you can see how they fit in the real numbers line. Where do I put complex numbers? What do I do with them? How do, how do I place them? Well, there was no clear answer to this, and somebody came up with the following diagram, which will seem familiar. So that's where 2 plus 3i goes, this point here. And what's going on is that this axis here is my good old real number line, the real axis. And this one here is going to be my imaginary axis. So, of course, numbers where the imaginary, so this point here, excuse me, the real part is 2, which is why I go to the 2 here, and the imaginary part is 3, which is why I go to the 3 here. Now, think about it for a second. All the numbers in the previous slide, their imaginary part is 0. Pi is pi plus 0 times i. So, there's no imaginary number there, and it's number here. Minus 1, minus 1 plus 0i. So the real numbers are the ones that have zero in their imaginary part. You can think of them that way. So this is just a way to represent complex numbers. This is a way to visualize them, right? Great. Now, in, keep it in mind, functions, and what you have seen this diagram before, which is showing functions like the parabola or the line, etc. That's a different thing, okay? There's a relationship but not within the scope of this course, mm, not really within the scope of this course, almost, almost gets there. Great. You have to know, however, that this is a diagram, it's called the Argand diagram, by the way. So what are the consequences of this little design that I drew? Well, okay, so it's 2 plus 3i, you can see it there. Well, I can calculate how long is this complex number, right? How long does it take me to go from 0, 0 to get here? Why would I do that, you might, want to, you might wonder, well, You'll find that. It's going to take a bit to find out, but you're going to have to trust me in this one. So how long is it? And another interesting thing is, well, what angle does it have with the real axis, right? How, what is the angle of this line towards the real axis? This is my axis. Well, that's another way to represent. You realize that if I have the exact angle and if I have the length, I can get to the point too. Very much in the same way that I can get to the point using... 2 plus 3i. So what we're going to be doing is, well, I know that, right? I know that it's another way to get to the point. So that's really another way to represent the number. So we're going to have this form and we're going to have this form. We're going to have the Cartesian form and we're going to have the polar form. Okay, good. So how do I go from one to the other? Okay, how do I go from Cartesian to polar form? Great. Here's my Cartesian number. How do I get the polar form out of this. Well, we're going to be using a bit of trigonometry. Now, I know how much this thing uh, measures. This measures 3. And I know how much this thing measures. This thing measures 4. And I know this is a right angle. So I can go to Pythagoras and just use Pythagoras to find the modulus. There you go. So the modulus in this case is going to be 5. Most of the time, your modulus are not going to be nice, beautiful numbers, and you shouldn't get alarmed. There might be numbers like square root of 7. That's fine. Tough life. What can we do? Now, the angle to calculate it, we're going to use the tangent. Now, remember, the tangent is simply the relationship in a right angle between the side that's further away from the angle divided by the side that's closest to the angle. And you don't use the hypotenuse. Okay? So... How do I make it, how are we going to get this angle? Well, I'm just going to use this 
idea. So it's 4 divided by 3. That's going to be the tangent of the angle. And then in my calculator, if I go to tan minus 1, I can find that the tangent is going to be 53.13. So the angle is going to be 53.13. So the modulus is 5, and the argument is 53.13 degrees. And that's my complex number in polar form. Go from polar to Cartesian. Again, I use a little bit of trigonometry. Here's my organ diagram. Okay. And how do I go now? How do I get my, my, my 3 and my 4, right? My 3 and my minus 4. Well, this is how you do it. You have to think that the sine is opposite divided by hypotenuse, right? So it's the sine is actually going to be the imaginary part divided by the modulus, right? Okay, so the imaginary part is equal to the modulus times the sine of alpha. And the cosine of the angle is going to be the adjacent divided by the hypotenuse. So again, the real part is going to be the modulus times the cosine of alpha. You see, I'm just taking this thing on the other side, multiplying, and this thing dividing. Sorry. Just taking this thing on the other side, multiplying. Excuse me for that. I don't want to make this video again. Please forgive me. Okay. So, ultimately, what, how am I going to get it in Cartesian form? Well, I know what the real part is. It's modulus times the cosine of alpha. So that's just going to be the real part. And the imaginary part is going to be the modulus times the sine of alpha. So it looks a bit scary here, but really, it's not that hard. It's going to be 5 times the cosine of minus 53.13 plus 5 times the sine of minus 53.13. And that's how I'm going to get my complex number in Cartesian form. So that's really it. That's how you go from one to the other and back. And that's the whole idea of the polar form. So what are the advantages? Why are we doing this? Sure, it's going to take it some time, but the main advantage is that it's probably going to be easier to multiply because all you have to do is multiply the modulus, the two different, like you have to multiply two complex numbers, just multiply the modulus and add the arguments. Easy. And easy to divide. Just divide the modulus and subtract the angles. Again, easy. And you can also, if you have to like make an operation such as like rise a complex number to the power of n, it's also going to be easier in the polar form. So it's something we call the Moivre theorem. So a lot of interesting maths are going to come out of this idea of the polar form. It doesn't sound like it made your life easier. And again, maths are not supposed to make your life easier, but they are essentially a very important tool used by a lot of, um, a lot of sciences. In particular, complex numbers appear more than you would think. Thank you very much for watching. I will see you next time. Bye.